Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall is accusing the NDP leader Tom Mulcair of dividing the country. Now, he's reacting to an interview I did with Tom Mulcair on CBC Radio's The House this week. And during that interview, Mulcair defended a thesis that he's written about before, that the boom in the resource sector in the West, developing the oil sands, for example, hurts the Canadian economy. In fact, takes money out of the Canadian economy, drives the dollar up, and directly hurts manufacturing in Ontario and Quebec. Now... Premier Wall is demanding from the new uh, leader of the official opposition exactly what. Let's find out. Joining me from Regina uh, is Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall. Premier Wall, welcome uh, to Power and Politics. You Thanks, heard, you heard uh, NDP leader Tom Mulcair on the, on the House. He basically said it's the Dutch disease. You know, after when the Netherlands discovered in the late 60s natural gas, they, he said the price of their currency drove up and they wiped out their manufacturing sector. He says the same things happening uh, here, let me just remind our viewers what he said. It's by definition the Dutch disease. The Canadian dollar is being held artificially high, which is fine if you're going to Walt Disney World. Not so good if you want to sell your manufactured product because the American client, most of the time, can no longer afford to buy it. We've hollowed out the manufacturing sector. At the present time, the way we're exploiting and developing the oil sands is causing an imbalance in our economy. That's demonstrable. He, in fact, goes on to say, Premier Wall, that uh, it's taking more jobs and money out of the economy than putting it in. What's your reaction to what he said? Well, I, I just couldn't disagree more. And we're, it's not just the oil sands that he's aiming at. By the way, I'm glad he's referring to them as oil sands and not tar sands or dirty oil, as he did in his paper in March uh, of this year. No, by the way, he uh, still calls them tar sands. I, I asked him that. He, he's okay with that. He, he'll call it tar sands, bitumen, oil sands. Well, I hope he's not referencing it as dirty oil, because obviously that's a brand, from a conventional oil producer in Saskatchewan, that's a brand we're trying to deal with uh, in, in, in some circles in the United States. I don't disagree with the thesis, and people, economists don't agree, don't agree actually. The governor of the Bank of Canada doesn't agree. Jack Mintz, a respected professor of economics, uh, doesn't agree. Uh, if, in, if, in fact, uh, Mr. Mulcair's thesis about uh, Dutch disease were true, uh, it, it's difficult to explain that the, the decline in the manufacturing sector in Ontario has been mirrored by a decline, almost an identical decline, in places like Ohio, uh, in places like Michigan, in the Rust Belt of the United States. It has a lot to do, of course, with the global economy. It has a lot to do with the shift of a lot of manufacturing to other regions of the world. A high dollar impacts exports, uh, but to blame uh, the energy sector for a, and, and use the word disease, I think is very divisive. This disease is helping to create jobs for Canadians across the country. Well, he says the opposite. He said it's demonstrable that unless you develop it differently, this is his point, not to stop developing, but he says the way we're developing it, he says we're not internalizing the cost of pollution, and he talks about that, in other words, we're not costing the pollution. He says, in fact, it's taking jobs out of the country. He also referenced Disney World in the clip. Maybe that logic would hold true there, but it just doesn't wash in terms of almost every economic analysis. And remember, uh, when you take a run at, when, you, when you're referencing Dutch disease, and by the way, there are many economists that wonder if, in fact, the long-term impact in Netherlands uh, wasn't actually quite positive because we see it as one of the stronger economies in Europe. But when you're using that term, it's not just oil sands, it's resource development, and it affects uh, those uh, provinces like Saskatchewan that are producing a lot of potash or uranium and, and conventional oil. And we know that right now they're driving economic opportunity in the country. Here's what else they're doing, Evan. They're, in an indirect way, contributing massively to equalization. The same program that supports $8 billion worth of spending by, the, by his home province, their provincial budget, that I assume would help them keep tuition, frankly, lower even after these increases than in most other parts of the country, that help uh, other have-not provinces, as we used to be, and we're grateful, we were very grateful for the help, other have-not provinces to maintain their, their, their programs. Right, but he's that's, saying, also, that's also what this energy uh, and natural resource strength uh, supports. But remember, he's saying that it drives up the dollar. And remember, Dalton McGinty said the same thing. He called it the petrodollar. Yeah. And he says it's killing manufacturing jobs. And he'll say 700,000 manufacturing jobs have been gone. So there's the demonstrable proofs in the I, last I, 10 years. I think Premier McGinty actually backed off. Yeah, and, he did. And, That's true. He, and, he apologized and, after. Sure, and rightfully so. And I have a, a great deal of respect for, for him doing that and, and for what he was talking about. A higher dollar impacts the manufacturing sector. Our manufacturing sector faces that same dollar, and it's seen some growth uh, and some significant growth over the same period of the high dollar. 
To equate the two, though, uh, in an unequivocal way, as Mr. Malker has done, is simply to engage in a very, very tenuous economic construct. So you think it's the facts divisive? Don't, you the think facts this is, don't, is it divisive? Is it pitting East versus West here? Is that what we're seeing? I think it's very divisive. Uh, and it's, it's a concern for people out West. Uh, you know, we... Uh, we hear that this is someone who's aspiring to 24 Sussex to be the, the prime minister of the country. I think his economics are wrong. And there's an, a lack of recognition there that the resource strength of Canada is, is, is a strength for, of Western Canada, is a strength for the whole country. Evan, the world today wants two things. The fastest growing economies of the world want two things, at least at the top of their list. They want energy security and food security. I like Canada's chances in that world. We have uh, real attendant strength in, in these areas, but we're going to need some, some vision nationally, and uh, obviously uh, we're going to uh, have to get over some of these deba debates that are based, I yeah, think, but, not on economic realities but hang in order on. to his, fulfill his, that role. His, he would agree with you that we have a, a role to play, but his point is... Uh, let's just stop, and I'll, I'll quote him, we've got to add value, we've got to stop shipping raw logs and stop shipping raw bitumen. The point is, he says, we need higher value here in the country to make more jobs in the country, not just sort of the strip it and rip it and ship it. I, I think everybody agrees. We have our own diversification plan in the province of Saskatchewan focused around an innovation agenda in more sustainable energy and clean coal production uh, in adding value to our great agricultural uh, potential here. But, but if the cure for this disease uh, is, and, and he references it a bit on, on the House, he certainly went there, some sort of built-in tax, a quote-unquote internalizing uh, the cost to the industry rather than the country, how is that going to help us develop the next uh, level of that particular industry. Well, Alberta's That's already got a $15 a, lot of cold a ton. Water on resource development, period. Well, they got already got $15 a ton. They already priced carbon in, in, in Alberta. They put it to a technology fund. He's saying uh, just simply expand that. Oh, yeah, he wants it at a much higher rate, at a much, much higher rate. And then there's an impact, not just in terms of the big oil companies that they may want to vilify, but there's, an in, there's going to be an impact in so many provinces across this country who right now, for good or for ill, rely on coal. Although, and those, although, those you know, rates will cites, be filtered down to consumers and to businesses, and we are going to take a pipe wrench to those parts of the economy that are, work, are working very well in Canada for all Canadians. And I think that's why this is misguided, and I think it's very divisive. You know, it's interesting. He cites uh, Michael Porter, you know, the business professor from Harvard, who says when you start internalizing those costs, you actually create jobs. You actually create <laughs> innovation. You actually create efficiencies. Well, we've seen, uh, certainly we've seen some innovation in the country as a result of uh, some effort with respect to pricing carbon. We have our own greenhouse gas legislation in the province. But to say that somehow uh, there's this sort of magical formula that will see a net, uh, a net increase in jobs over what we're doing today, after you layer in a massive increase in energy costs, which is foundational to the economy, I think other economists are saying, just wait a minute, uh, you know, let's make sure that we don't ruin what's working well about the country. And I think we should diversify and add value here. But let's watch some of the uh, rhetoric in this debate. And I'd say to Mr. Mulcair, he should explain to Western Canada why what we're doing out here is bad for the country when we know we're contributing mightily to the nation. We, we like to be in that position, by the way. As I said, we were a have-not province not very long ago in Saskatchewan. We know that in the long term, the country's better off when, uh, when uh, there's regional opportunities. Because the country's big. It's got disparate economic mm -hmm. interests. When one part of the country's having trouble, by definition, it's good to have another part providing some opportunities. Opportunity, and we have been and will be on both sides of that spectrum in the years ahead. Very, uh, very interesting uh, debate going on, uh, and it looks to be uh, uh, an escalating debate a bit. We'll find out Thomas Mulcair's response to the Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall, who says uh, this is getting divisive. Uh, this is a very important debate. We'll continue to have it. Premier, always uh, welcome you on the program. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Evan. Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall on that, and you see, we'll see what Tom Mulcair now says about this. Uh, very fascinating, uh, escalating tug of war between the resource development and environmental.